today's video, I'm going to be talking about part two of my in-depth planner tour, which is going through the monthly and the weekly view of my planner. Um, if you guys haven't seen the previous video where I talk about just a general overview of how I plan and also what my inbox is, I'm going to link those videos up above here as I'm talking about them. And I will also leave the links to all of those videos in the description box below. But one of the videos kind of talks about my overall planning style. And then the second video specifically goes into um, the inbox portion of this planner, which I have labeled part one of my in-depth planner tour. This is part two, and then I will continue on. I think there's going to be four or five parts total. I didn't want to overwhelm you guys with a super long video, so I broke it down into smaller, hopefully more manageable pieces. Before we dive in, I'm going to take a minute and talk about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community built to help you unleash your creative potential. New classes are constantly being added, so if you want to learn something new or brush up on an old skill, this is the place to do it. I have been making and selling stickers in my Etsy shop for years now, and I finally decided it's time to try creating my own hand-drawn stickers. I'm brand new to drawing on my iPad, and so I just started a new set of Skillshare classes that are all about how to illustrate on the Procreate app. They're the perfect classes for me because they focus on basics like using reference photos, navigating the dozens of digital brush options, and tips for how to export my art once I'm done drawing. I'm super excited to start creating one-of-a-kind stickers for my Etsy shop, and I hope to be able to share those with you guys soon. Skillshare classes are broken down into shorter, more manageable lessons that allow you to learn at your own pace and repeat lessons if you need more practice. These classes are curated for learning, so there's no ads, and at less than $10 a month for an annual subscription, this tool can fit any budget. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box below will receive a free trial of a Skillshare Premium Membership. If you guys have been watching my videos for any amount of time, you know that I only recommend stuff that I personally use and love, and Skillshare is no exception. In my last couple of videos, I did talk about using my Hobonichi, which again, I'm still not quite settled in between these two planners. I took this on, on my trip with me just because I wanted to have kind of everything all in one because I do daily journal in my Hobonichi. But since I've been home, I kind of find myself gravitating back towards my disc bound planner. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get to the collections video, which will be part three, the next video at in this series. Um, but I everything that I do in here can easily be replicated in my Hobonichi or any other planner for that matter. But um, I just prefer the organization, I think, of my disc bound planner. So yeah, um, like I said, I will either be in this or the Hobonichi sometime this year. I'm not buying any more planners. I have definitely found that A5 is my happy place. So I think I actually had this same uh, vellum cover on in my last video talking about the disc bound planner, but I changed out the dashboard behind it. So it's a little bit lighter for spring is hopefully on its way here soon. Um, the planner is fe looking and feeling kind of stuffed right now because I have a bunch of things inside here to show you guys, but I don't normally keep it this like stuffed full. So uh, as I'm, I put more examples of the things that I'm talking about inside here so I didn't have to rustle around and look for them, but my planner's not normally this stuffed full. So anyway, I did change out this right here. And then this is my normal inbox that I talked about in the last video, which I will link up above here. Uh, so this, before you even get to any of the dividers in my planner, this is, this consists of my inbox right here. It's basically just brain dumps and scratch paper for me to use to just quickly scribble things down that I will come back to and pro put in their proper location or proper collection as needed. So the next part of my planner, um, here, I'll move this really quick, but the next two tabs of my planner are the monthly view and the weekly view. So I have monthly view, weekly view, collections. I think this is like home and meal planning. Um, this is like health stuff. And then I think this is my work tab. So I'm going to talk about the rest of these tabs at a later time. But today I'm just going to focus on the monthly and the weekly view in my planner. So the monthly and the weekly view, I pretty much 
have never changed how I use that in any planner I've ever used. I use my monthly view as like a bird's eye view of the month. Uh, generalized information goes there, future planning goes in there. And then when I actually get to the current week that I'm planning for, I will flip back and forth between my monthly view and my weekly view, transferring information as needed. So in my previous videos, I have talked about my planner kind of acting as like a funnel system where the more general information starts at the front. And as you work towards the planner, it gets a little bit more specific. So it's kind of like sifting out rocks. So we start out really general here and then every tab gets a little bit more and more specific. So very generalized information goes into my inbox, slightly more specific goes into my monthly view, slightly more specific goes into my weekly view, and then my collections follow that. And I've used that when I was in an Erin Condren, when I was in a Ringbound Planner, when I'm in the Hobonichi, that does not change. The monthly view is more of a bird's eye view. The weekly view is much more specific. I have done the monthly view when I'm doing, when I'm in a disc bound or a ring bound planner, there are tons of different options out there for printing off or buying monthly and weekly views for the planner. Peanuts Planner Co. offers a free monthly view every single year that you can print off and it's really, really great. You can actually type into it and put holidays in it, which is what I do. I Before I print it off, I will type in all the holidays. This year, I decided to try the Erin Condren Petite Planner Monthly Planner. And so I just took one of her A5 size petite planners, cut it down and punched it for this planner. So you can see it is actually a true A5 size. This is technically a half letter size planner. So this is A5, which is slightly wider and slightly shorter than half letter, but that doesn't bother me. Uh, I missed having all the holidays pre-printed and having like Erin Condren's monthly color scheme in here. So, And it's actually worked out really well for me this year. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be repurchasing this for next year or if I'll just print off the Peanuts Planner Co. freebie and put in the holidays myself. But either way, I gotta have a monthly overview. Any of the products that I'm going to talk about in this video, I will leave links to where you can find them down below. And I will also leave any affiliate codes that I have as well so that you guys can get a discount on whatever product I'm talking about. So inside the Erin Condren Petite Planner, they have a 2020 and a 2021 overview. They have space for in the coming year. I don't really use this view all that often. I know a lot of people will use it for like school calendars and things like that. Um, it's nice to have an overview of you know, the year at a glance. It's just not something that I personally use. I'm sure someday when I have kids and more people to keep track of, this will be more useful for me, but that's the yearly overview there. And then this was an 18 month planner. And so I took out the 20, the six months of 2020 out of here. Um, and it, so then it just goes straight into January. January is a little bit bare because I was messing around in my Hobonichi for a little while, but you'll see February is um, quite a bit more, this is a more of a normal view for me. Um, I did make a little, just using plastic and I cut down to size a like page finder in here. I, I think I just sent an empty laminator envelope through my laminator and then I cut it down to size and punched it for here. Um, but basically that way I can just flip to the current month. And I don't really do any decorating. I've been moving away from decorating in my planner for a few months now in general, but in my monthly overview, there's just not enough space to get super, super decorative for me. I mostly keep track of like my husband's uh, duty schedule, birthdays, anniversaries, um, big events, traveling, things like that. And then, you know, monthly recurring tasks that pertain to the pets. Like I give them their you know, flea medication on the first of every month. And then I completely change out the litter box litter like on the 15th of every month. So just really basic overview stuff. And then all the holidays are in here as well. You can see birthdays, anniversary, Super Bowl, things like that. So this is just kind of where my future planning happens. And then just, again, broad overview information. You can see here, I have a flight scheduled on this date, but I don't have any super specific information like the time or the airline or anything like that, because this is just meant to trigger my brain for when I'm going to set this week up in my weekly view. I don't need to have all that information here on the date that it's happening. I just know that, oh, I have a flight on this day. On my weekly view, I'll put the airline, what time it's leaving, that kind of stuff. So this is just used to trigger my brain when I need to put more specific stuff in the weekly view. So as I'm setting up a weekly view, I'll be flipping back and forth between the monthly view and the weekly view, transcribing anything important from the monthly view into the weekly view as it's happening. I will also use this to schedule like way far out stuff. And so for that, I if it's not like set in stone, I will use pencil or a page flag. So these are all things that are um, tentatively happening 
in the months to come, things like that. And then that way, when I actually get to the month, I can I can pull the page flags off, solidify the plans that I know are happening, um, or erase anything in pencil and put it in pen and just kind of solidify it as it's happening. Uh, the last thing that I will use in the monthly view is the notes column. It's not filled out very well. It's not filled out here because I just transferred back into this planner. But basically, I use this notes column right here as if it were a like traditional bullet journal to do grouping. This is an old bullet journal from years ago, and the traditional bullet journal instructions have you collect at the end of every previous month, collect any unfinished tasks and move them into the next month's to-do list. That's how I treat this column right here. So anything from the weeks or the month view from the previous month that didn't get finished, any tasks or um, things that I needed to do, if they didn't get finished, they get dumped right here. I just haven't transferred everything back over because I, like I said, I just got myself back into this planner. In addition to that, I also will use that column to notate something I need to have happen during the month, but it's not necessarily date specific. So my husband's officer commissioning ceremony is happening in April. And so I want to get a haircut sometime in the month of March um, in preparation for that. So it's not date specific, but I do want to have it happen in March. Okay, so hopefully all of that makes sense. I do keep all 12 months worth of inserts for the monthly overview in my planner. And then in the weekly view, I only keep three months worth. So I keep the current month, the previous month, and then the following month. That helps me keep the planner pretty slim. I almost never flip back to two months ago in the weekly view. If I need a piece of information from a, a previous month, it will generally be in the monthly view. Or if I really need something more specific, I archive my previous weeks. And so I'll just go to my archives and find the week in question. So my weekly view has been kind of a work in progress. I have developed quite a few different printables for this view in my planner almost all of which are located in my Etsy shop to buy if you guys like them. But I'll show you kind of where I started and where I'm at today. But that's one of the cool things about disc bound or ring bound planners that if there's a view that's not quite working for you, you can find a printable or even make a printable for yourself that actually is completely customized to what you need. All right, I just noticed that I was not in the center of my frame. I am so sorry. How annoying is that? Okay, continuing on. This is one of the first iterations of inserts that I made. I have space on the side here for a, a weekly to-do column, and then I have Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday here, and then three more blank boxes that I kind of uh, switched around what I was using those for. Then this is the second iteration of that, uh, where I moved my like weekly to-do column up to the top, and I gave myself a little bit more space on Saturday and Sunday. I moved Monday through Friday down here and put the weekend on the side. And then I found I was almost never using as much space as I left for myself on Saturday and Sunday. And so that brought me to this version, which um, this has been my favorite layout so far. So I have six empty boxes at the top, which I kind of use this side for personal to-dos for the week, this side for work to-dos for the week, and then I have Monday through Friday here, Saturday and Sunday here. All three of these layouts are currently available in my Etsy shop. Um, and so when I was kind of feeling planner anxiety, planner fail coming on, I would rework what my weekly layout looked like and print something new off and easy as that, I was back into feeling the planner groove again. Then um, you can see that I haven't really done a whole lot of decorating as of late. I've just been kind of craving the gray, black, white vibe. And so it doesn't have to be as busy as this right here. It can be as simple as just writing down what I need to do um, in, in pen and black and white. And that is it. Because I do love the layout of the Hobonichi, I also have been messing around with a Hobonichi style insert, which I actually really like this a lot. The columns are narrower, but that's not a huge deal. But the Hobonichi really takes advantage of the space really well. And so I kind of really love this layout as well. So I'm not quite sure where I'm going to land. I have options, which is always a good thing. So I'm finishing testing these out and then I will put these in my Etsy shop. And then I also am testing out a more like typewriter style font on those previous three inserts. Not everybody likes the brush script. So I'm working on getting a less like script style font available, but eventually I will have these in my shop as well. So basically all that being said, just to say that I set up my weeks on Sunday night generally. So 
I will go to the week coming up. I'll fill in, you know, my dates or whatever, and then I will transfer in anything pertaining to my husband's work schedule. I will put in um, holidays. I will add, at the time there was a football game. I was picking up my family from the airport for Christmas. Any appointments that I had, those all get transferred from the monthly view into the weekly view, and then I fill in my days as the week is going on. I'll see if I can find a better example of that here. I don't really have anything major going on this week um, except my sister's birthday is on Sunday. So really the only thing that got transferred from my monthly view to the weekly view is my sister's birthday, which was on Sunday. So if you flip back to the monthly view, you can see that starting from the week of the 22nd, I don't have a whole lot going on except for on the 28th, my sister's birthday. So that's the only thing that got transferred from the monthly view to the weekly view. And then as my week is going on, I'm filling in to-dos up here. I'm filling in daily to-dos, things like that. So um, more of these tasks have actually been completed than I have checked off. So do as I say, not as I do. Check things off as you finish them. <laughs> And then behind my weekly view, I have a couple months worth of habit trackers in here. So yeah, so basically, since we're in the month of February, I will, in general, I will have January, February, and March in here. Um, I'm still kind of settling back in for my trip and making sure everything's organized again, but I keep the previous month, the current month, and the following month in my weekly view. And then at the beginning of every month, I take out the previous month and then put in the following month's inserts just so that I have kind of like a rolling three months worth of inserts in my weekly view. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions about how I plan in the monthly view and the weekly view, please leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. I love chatting with you about planners. Check out the description box for links to all of the planner inserts and supplies that I talked about. I have all the websites linked down below. Some of them you can find on Amazon as well. And then if I have an affiliate code, I have shared that below as well. So hopefully you guys can get a couple bucks off of your order. Sorry, the first half of the video was not in the center. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting my channel. I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.